Hey alle Opa, ja ich heiße Ralf, o ja er Franziskland, o ja Tala Svenska. Hey alle Opa, hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Say It in Swedish. I'm your host Joachim and remember to stop by SayItInSwedish.com after this video for free lessons and free goodies for learning Swedish. Today we're gonna take a look at a few Swedish verbs that kind of look as were they in the passive voice but actually they have an active function we call this de deponent verbs and uh, this can be a bit confusing because some of these also have a regular active uh, sibling so uh, uh, I have seen a lot of people, a lot of learners, confusing these verbs. So today we're gonna go through 10 verbs and uh, I'm gonna tell you also uh, which ones you shouldn't confuse them with. Here we go! So minnas means to remember in Swedish and it can only be used in this active voice. Cannot be used in the passive voice. Uh, people cannot be remembered with minnas. But uh, you can remember stuff and I can remember stuff and other people can remember stuff. So for instance we have the example Jag minns förra sommaren. I remember last summer. And that's how you use this one. This next one can be a bit tricky because we have two words that basically look the same. But one is the deponent verb finnas which means to exist. And then we have finna which means to find. And I guess uh, if you would put finna in its passive voice, that turns into finnas. So if you're being found, you kind of exist. Uh, so I suspect those are related like that, but it's important to remember here. Those verbs have nothing to do with each other uh, meaning-wise here. Those are two different words. Finnas means to exist and finna means to find. So an example would be Det finns mjölk i kylen. There is milk in the fridge. So finnas is used as there is or there are in English. And uh, so it basically means exist but it also means there is and there are. So jag finns basically means I exist but det finns mjölk i kylen means there is milk in the fridge. It exists milk in the fridge. <laughs> Next we have andas and this one is kind of logical if you uh, think about how it might derive from a passive voice because andas means to breathe and this is something you normally don't do actively you do it autonomously it just happens like you just breathe. You just breathe. I Now because I'm talking and I'm thinking about it now now I need to actively breathe. That's that's bad. But anyway, uh, you can kind of see how maybe this was uh, developed from a passive voice and then the active one just got scrapped because you don't really breathe actively. Anyway, it's something that happens passively. So um, I don't know if this is the case, but I highly suspect so. So andas means to breathe in Swedish. And I guess, I don't, do you need an example for this? Like, jag andas, I, I'm breathing. That's it. This next one is a little tricky because of the translation, because there is no good one-to-one -one equivalent in English. The verb is trivas, and it's basic, it basically means uh, to like it at some place, or have to be comfortable and you think a place is nice, so you feel comfortable being there. Uh, for instance, let's uh, let's take a few example so examples so that you can uh, understand what I'm talking about. So, for instance, trivs du här means do you like it here? In English, you would say do you like it here? Uh, in Swedish, we say trivs du här, and that basically means do you feel comfortable being here? Do you think that this is a nice place? Are you having a nice time? And so on. Do you just if you feel comfortable at the place, then you trivs. And this goes for trivs du med det nya jobbet. That means are you comfortable at your new new job or uh, do you like your new job basically? It, are, are you comfortable with it? Do you like being there and doing 
you uh, doing some work. So um, it's not easy to translate the whole uh, word with another in 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 English. Something we do every Sunday after a night out on Saturday is kräkas, and that means to vomit. And I guess <laughs> this is also one of those cases where uh, the active voice just disappeared, I think, I don't know, but it seems logical because you don't actively vomit normally. I mean, you can induce it, but you're not doing the, the work your body is, so it's just something that happens. So you, you vomit, and that happens passively in a way. You just have to think a little bit about its meaning. I, I think that's interesting, but uh, all you need to know is, is that this, this word means to vomit, and it doesn't mean to be vomited on or something. It's not passive, it's active. The verb to succeed is a deponent verb in Swedish. Lyckas. And uh, yeah, it means look, it means to succeed or to manage. So, for instance, I managed to close the door. Is jag lyckades stänga dörren? Jag lyckades stänga dörren. I managed or I succeeded uh, with, uh, you know, closing the door. For instance, I know for a fact that people mix this one up with another verb that looks the same, but you know, without that s. So the the verb is hoppas. It means to hope, but uh, I've seen this, a lot of people use the verb hoppa. Hoppa means to jump, it does not mean to hope. Uh, yeah, and so those verbs are not, are not the same here. Hoppa, to jump, hoppas, to hope. So, jag hoppas det blir regn. I hope that we will have rain. For instance, <laughs> if you do, I do so. I I do hope so right now. I'm, it's really hot again today, and it's I I I want some autumn now, please. This one also have an active sibling, so yay for you. You could mix those up, but anyway, sloss is the word we uh, want to talk about today. Sloss means to fight, whereas slua means to punch. Punch, poo, yeah, and sloss is something you do with your brother, for instance. You 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 will punch him, but you will also fight him, right? <laughs> so, slua to punch, and sloss is to fight. So sloss in the new poikar. Don't fight now, boys. But this is not a, just a, a verbal fight. This is a that kind of fight. We also have kind of a set phrase with this. Ni får slåss om det. And you use that when uh, you have two people, for instance, but you only have one of a thing and you want to give it to them uh, because you don't need it, for instance, and uh, yeah, they have to fight over it or uh, they have to share. So, ni får, ni får slåss om det means you have to fight over it. So, let's take two more. We have retas, which means to tease, but we also have reta, which also means to tease. So. Jag retar honom, which uh, that means I tease him. But in uh, in the deponent form retas, you can say jag retas med honom. I I'm teasing with him, basically. But it's not with him. It's you you tease him, right? So jag retas med honom. I I'm teasing with him, in literally. <laughs> so in this case, it's it. If you mix those up, uh, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but you have to remember that there is a preposition there uh, with one and not with the other. <laughs> and last one is skämmas, which means to be ashamed. So you could say jag skäms, which means I'm ashamed or yeah, I feel bad, I feel bad, jag skäms. And uh, you could also say jag skäms över dig, I'm ashamed of you. Mm. All right, sweeties, that was everything for today. If you look in the description down below, you'll find a link to say it in Swedish with some more information about these deponent verbs. And if you want to support this project, please do to keep it alive. You will find the link to Patreon 
down in the description as well. And don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment and we will see each other in the next video. Okay? Howdy bro! Hey all!